Hi, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Talking Reckless Podcast. My name is Matt Eads, joined by Oliver Aguilar. Hi, Matt. Brandon Lynch. Hi, Matt. And you. Hi, Matt. Welcome back to the show. Hi, <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to take these headphones off. You know, yeah, what? you're look at this, Mister Confidence. I'm going to take these. And... I'm going to take these phones off. Yeah, I can watch the ones and twos on the mixer here. Uh, boy, this feels weird. Maybe I'll put them back on. Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. so feel you, naked. You look stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you look stupid, and we sound Jeez. stupid. I didn't even know you, you had ears. Even... Fair enough. Uh, how's everyone doing? Happy Sunday, Sunday afternoon, pre D and D. This show being laid down. Yeah, it is. So I have the weekend off. Oh, otherwise I would not be here because I'd be at work. I see. Yeah. What, I'm surprised uh... I didn't get more pushback for the. Yeah, I'll be there at two o'clock on Sunday. I'm surprised I didn't get some like Brandon. You're working, you idiot. I you you I can't keep track of your schedule ever. <laughs> I always think I have it. I'm like perfect six o'clock right, and you're like actually yeah. I'm at work till seven today. Yeah. And then I always go the other way, like, all right, I know he's up at seven today. I'm like, no, actually, it's uh, six o'clock on these days. If it helps at all, it's never six. Oh, good. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Fucking perfect. I just know that, like, yeah, you were probably scraping bottom of the barrel because I know you hate doing podcast and D&D. Yeah, it's just and a long And inviting day. me. It's just a, well, yeah, fuck. <laughs> Mr. No Survey over here. Mr. Mm -hmm. No Slack. I got to, like, fucking phone you up. I got to send him, like, a a, yeah. a Morse code a telegram. telegram. Yep. Pigeons. On a pigeon, you yeah, know. it's very hard to get in touch with. Uh, it's just a long day of broadcasting. Yeah, you know, I D and D is exhausting. D and D is. Uh, it should be less exhausting now. Hopefully, with this new mixer, is part of the idea. How long are your sessions usually? Uh, less four? less than four hours. Yeah, between four? between three and four hours. Yeah, we should start playing in the afternoons on. again too. I mean, this is great. We'll do this live on this podcast right now. We should start playing in the afternoons again. It's now. Since Paul has started work and whatever oh, her right. schedule is, yeah, like even starting at five thirty, I'm like, she says she's off at five thirty, which means they're not gonna fucking get around to fucking oh. six. It's okay. Audio, everything should be audio check should be way faster. It should all be, but yeah, we're gonna be rushed for time tonight. That's okay. I always feel I don't know. People are always yawning by the end of D and D. I'm all, I always it, it I always see a lot of yawns, and I'm like, okay, we gotta wrap this up. It starts to get late. It's tough. Yeah, I remember yeah, it, not, not like late, and, late too, but yeah. I remember when I was doing it and I would just be like, this takes a lot more mental work than I yeah, It does, it's, actually. Yeah. Your being in character is is a uh, Yeah. Is fun, but it is it is work. It is capital W work sometimes. If someone asks me why I don't do the D and D anymore, I tell them because it was too hard. <laughs> Too much time. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that because I have a, a, a ton of fun when when we're playing that, and um, I want it to go f longer. Like I could go on and on, but yeah. yes, I know a lot of people are don't have that capacity. Yawns. Jay and whoops, I always hit this mic. Sorry, Jay and Kev will start yawning at like eight. Uh, and, and then, then Kevin, usually, usually yawn ten minutes into our podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and, then, and then usually, usually the yawns are going around enough by like nine. I'm like, all right, let's let's look for a spot to to leave them hanging here. When I check my phone and I see it approaching, like yeah, nine. I'm like, fuck, it's gonna end soon. Mm -hmm. Fuck. They will go long tonight. I don't know. Huh. You guys oh, have okay. a, a a big boss fight. I understand. Also, big the boss. the pacing uh, sort of demands that you have to like. We can't go on and do this fight because it's already late. Yeah, so you, you have like to one stop turn it there. into this battle, and then yeah. yeah. So I, I get that too. Everybody, go listen or watch our D and D show called Rolling Reckless, which is not gonna. I mean, it didn't sound like garbage before, but some weeks sound a little amateur. Uh, it's gonna sound great. It's gonna sound great from here on. My personal guarantee, the Mad Eads stamp. It's gonna sound Kingdom Hearts don't approved. Put stamp baby. on most of that. You just fucking. Can't fucking put Kingdom Hearts in with Kingdom that. Hearts approved. <laughs> I can't remember who's the who who did Kingdom Hearts and uh, uh, Final Fantasy Seven. Who Square Enix? Nomura. No, oh. Nomura. Yeah, it's got the Nomura N on it. <laughs> Did that rhythm game ever come out? A Kingdom Hearts rhythm game. You have asked the right guy. Mm. Uh, anime editor and Kingdom Hearts editor. <laughs> Uh, it has not. Not yet. Okay. No. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, go go watch go watch our D&D &D show. It's dope. I really like D&D &D a lot. I like it a lot. Yeah, well. we'll figure out a way when you guys move away. We'll figure out a way maybe to try and Skype you in or something. Put an iPad over are you, the chair. Are you seriously considering that? Because, yeah, I maybe. mean, Amber and I talked about it. I mean, if it, if, if, 
you're less likely to move away if I say no, then absolutely not. <laughs> Amber and I talked about that, and we're like, ah, I mean, he hates he hates that. I hate it. Yeah. It's true. So I, but better I, than not playing. Sure. Or maybe we could play your game that we are never going to start on online or something. Well, I mean, we could talk about that as well, but... Um... Yeah, one of the things, and, and I'll say this on the record, one of the things that Amber and I truly, like, are are bummed about with this whole moving away idea is like, fuck, and we're gonna, like, we're gonna, we're gonna have to stop playing D&D. So there you go. So yeah. there, I hope that speaks to you a little yeah, bit. It's a good yeah, they don't, uh, they don't have it out there. No. Good, <laughs> re, real talk, good DMs are hard to find. Yeah, good, consistent no, DMs like who want to play every week are really tough to find. Yeah, and then the group as well, right? Yeah, because I know, a good... for what I read, read on, on the internet and Reddit and stuff, it sounds like, fucking, this These is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, this is a nightmare. Yeah, this is a nightmare sometimes. Between, like, yeah, shitty DMs. We live the D&D horror yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. Shitty players, and then, and then all combinations of, like, not getting along with people, mm-hmm. not having, like, the right group of people that like sort of the same thing or have the same idea with things or like the just even the proper like conflict resolution in yeah. in the group yeah like fuck that sounds fucking brutal but i mean we've been doing it for over a year now for a long time and for the most part we're we're good and yeah we got you, a super you've held group. it together we've got a super super good group well then it sounds like everyone else just has to move with you i mean let's, you, you got a basement you want to rent <laughs> like i could do this job anywhere <laughs> Okanagan's beautiful. Okanagan we get we get a whole new cast. Good. Probably they, they love video games in BC. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know that. Burning Crusade. Oh, they named their province after a World of Warcraft expansion. <laughs> Good. Go watch the D and D show. Everybody. Go watch the D and D show. It's super dope, and it's going to sound way better when when in, we eventually get to a season two and wrap this campaign. It's going to be it's going to be lit. Oh man! Bam. It's even that. Oh, even boy. even you saying that. How far of a trip is it? It's not so far that you couldn't like drive back for once. A not a weekend. not a weekend, but like you know, <laughs> like one a, a month. It's like or... a nine hour drive. Yeah, that's not. I mean, Grand Prairie is like Make that in one day? five and a half. I've done I've done two and from Grand Prairie in a day, and it's sucks, but it's not. Okay, that's for D and D. You wouldn't drive nine hours I mean, once a month, completely you know, hang out for the weekend. When it happens, I'll definitely make time for something. But it's not going to be guy. a scheduled this guy. thing. That is a nine-hour drive. This guy, what, what, it's not going to be a scheduled right. thing. So you're just going to be like, "Oh, I got, nine, I got nine free hours. Boys, get the dice. I'm on my way." <laughs> no, Matt, get the screen up. Let's do this. I mean, if he said that, I'm sure everyone would assemble. Yeah, obviously. Oliver's coming in hot. Fucking the captain says assemble, and and you do. Drive through the night. Is the Avengers worth playing? No. Okay. Well, no. if you can get it cheap, I think. Yeah. Be. If you can find it for cheap and you just want to play the campaign, that's pretty fun. Or if you want to wait, honestly, wait for it to come out on next gen when it's like finished and has content and it, it might be pretty good. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember Any other questions? What, what, <laughs> what Brando said about getting games from the library. Like the Amish. Like the Amish, just like the Amish. Dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Known lovers of libraries. <laughs> <laughs> the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really know. I mean, the libraries don't have electricity, right? They just uh, got books. Too much paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to keep the paper away from them. Uh. Oh man, you're gonna get control from the library. You were saying before the show. Here. Yes, that's right. It, I was surprised that it was available. Hell yes. And fuck yeah, I'm gonna get that. I really, really like control. You're gonna get yourself some Alan Wake DLC. Yeah, yeah. That's probably gonna like sort of flop for me because I have no idea what yeah. Alan Wake is. Oh, really? I, yeah. As someone who knows what Alan Wake is, it's sort of flop. Yeah. It was, it was, not not flopped, but not like, it wasn't a home run no. like the first main game is. It was much like the uh, Final Fantasy 7, uh, my <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 experience. It was way more fun to talk about than to play. Yeah. yeah. I but feel yeah, you Control could... is way more fun to talk about than to play. Yeah. I'm going to slug through it because, yeah, it sounds like... still fun to play. Yeah, you guys have have painted this picture for me, and it sounds like an incredible story, at least. I think it's the stuff you're into as well. It sounds interesting. Yeah. I... We still need a a name for that, like, style of fiction, that genre. You call it weird fiction? Uh, People are calling it new weird for, like, old weird is eldritch, Mm. like... Cthulhu and things, and new weird is is this style of, of power and yeah, whatnot. Kind of, yeah, kind of. I don't even know. We need a like overarching, encompassing term for 
like Warehouse 13 and and uh, hey, what's that show that we watched? You should watch that show we watched on the room. Amazon Prime. The Lost Room. You should watch The Lost Room before you play Control. Yeah. That's what how I wish I would have done it. Hell yeah. I it's think you, you talked about that. That's an older show, right? Yeah. 2006 or something. Early 2000s. Is that like a series? That's it's like, six it's episodes. Six episodes, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's real. They're like half an hour each as well. I think it's technically like three episodes, three hour long episodes yeah. or something. But. And that not necessarily contributes to the story of Control, but it, it, it sort it's of very heavily. Yeah, it's very, like, Control feels like it is very heavily insp- inspired by at least that kind of fiction. Yeah. Yo. There are a lot of similarities. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that advice. I'm trying to... There are so many shows and things in that category, but I can never think of them when pressed. Warehouse 13 and and The Lost Room are the only two I can ever... Indiana Jones is kind of fits into this, like the Ark of the Covenant yeah, bit, and that yeah. big... Warehouse 13 is literally the big warehouse at the end of, of uh, Indiana Jones where the Ark of the Covenant goes. Mm-hmm. And when you say Indiana man. Jones, is that like the Pulp Fiction kind of stuff? It's it, It's not really action? pulpy, no. But like, you know, the big warehouse at the end of Indiana yeah, Jones. Yeah. That the the concept for all this fiction is: what if every single one of these boxes had a weird magical item in it, and hmm. what if we tried to? Usually, there's some kind of containment or like control. The Ark of the mold. Covenant is was uh, that was the chest, right? Yeah, that you opened it and like it melted your face. Yeah, It'd that, be an object of power. It, it, it is. By the letter of the law, I guess an object of power, but the thing that's always got me is the, like, mundaneness of the objects of power, whereas, like, the Ark of the Covenant was, like, that's a fucking thing. Yeah. I'm looking at it, I can yeah. tell you that there's something going on with that thing, Capital whereas, like, T noun. yeah, whereas I like the, like, yeah, the fucking pencil where as you tap it on the desk, something happens. Makes quarters, quarters or whatever. Appear. Yeah. Wrap and the just, watch around an egg and it cooks it and hard boils the egg. Yeah, like, just the weird, like how did someone come up with the fact that this item does this and then blowing that out to the fact that like, what if there was like a very like, uh, uh, like government order, very buttoned down business, all dedicated to controlling this stuff. So that's what control is. Mm. basically. The intersection of like uh stiff bureaucracy with mm-hmm. like zany fictional objects. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. I, uh, recommend reading the the notes the, the the documentation you find is is uh enjoyable in a way i don't read usually any other game codexes or, or anything like that but the stuff you find in control is uh really it's very good yeah huh. often laugh a lot, we talk probably. a lot about we could have we, we talked about in the spoiler cast we get in a whole spoiler cast of like literally just reading these fucking documents mm-hmm. and like just talking yeah, like oh this them. one's clearly talking about this one and this one's talking about then they have like the reference numbers like See object of power file 2042 and like you can actually have that in your like list somewhere and be like, well, what's this about? Yeah. Oh, this is the swan. The fucking, fucking swan, swan boat. boat. <laughs> I don't remember what that one did. I remember you had to chase it. Took you to the tunnel of love, I remember. Mm. Oh, it's so good. God, I love control. <laughs> you should make another one. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. But just because you guys have um talked about our length, and plus you have that spoiler cast. And as I was saying that I really enjoyed Listen, you guys talk about video games. Thank you that's, very much. That's Thanks. I do it for a living. Thank you. Yeah, hey. That's nice of you to say. Pretty good at it. I mean, I talk about anime for a living, but mm. video games, secondarily. Uh, go check out the Patreon or <laughs> patreon.com slash Talk Merkles Podcast if you want to support the show and get access to uh, Eads' anime discussion. Excellent show! 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 You're watching... Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. Yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. It is fucking rad. Wow. Yes, it is. Uh, it is like a Dragon Ball Super level of good, but what if you didn't need the Dragon Ball nostalgia for... It's just a very good, very, very good show. I really like it. It's funny that you mentioned Dragon Ball nostalgia, because you've ne- you've never had Dragon Ball nostalgia. Well, Dragon Ball Z nostalgia. I have a little bit of original Dragon Ball nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. A little bit. Because I have Dragon Ball nostalgia. And going back, I'm like, I, this should just stay nostalgia for me. I had never watched an episode of Dragon Ball but before yeah, Dragon Ball Z. But you guys, in, in, in a way, have picked up on that show and are loving it. Yeah. Dragon Z- Ball Z is just such a different thing from Dragon Ball, and Dragon Ball Super feels like an extension of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Whereas Dragon Ball Z does not feel like an extension of Dragon Ball mm-hmm. original. Mm-hmm. It, like, tonally, it's different. and Yeah. Attack on Titan is very good. If you have low what I call anime tolerance, if, like, people falling into cleavage is not something you're looking for in your anime, uh, there's none of that in Attack on Titan, at least in the first 35 episodes or whatever we're on. Uh, it's dope. It's so good. 
Well, better to face plant into cleavage than on the concrete. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Some yeah, of these, some of these scouts probably up. wish they had some some fucking cleavage to break their falls. Is there? A lot of just like the people die real good in Attack on Titan. In a, almost every episode, there's someone who is like getting just ripped apart by giants in a way that I'm like, fuck. Imagine being the person recording that session. Like, oh, oh, it's real visceral. People crying out for their parents and like, oh, it's. Did you guys stick with Castlevania? Yeah. No. Fell off in that most recent season. Yeah. Second season, right? Three. Third, I think. And there's yeah. a third? Yeah. Three started to lose me a little bit. One, I, I really love one. One really is like so one. fucking dope. Two, I was already starting to be like, I'll yeah. finish it because it's not a big commitment. Yeah. And then three, I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I think I'm still- I hate anime. Because you hate anime. Right. It's fair enough. For two, there was a, like, a noticeable drop in, like, animation quality. And that really was off-putting for me. I don't know if you, you guys noticed that. Because one was actually really good. Yeah, my yeah. eyes aren't, like, trained enough in that way yet yeah. to be like, You are Ugh. still the black belt for anime. Yeah. I'm, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> Senpai. <laughs> but it's, um, it's something that happens when I'm, I'm reading comic books as well, and I don't know if you can speak on this, mm -hmm. uh, Brando. But, like, uh, I, can, I can stick through a comic book with good writing mm -hmm. and mediocre... Um, Visuals, visuals, yeah. But sometimes it's just like really tough. Every now and then, like you'll stumble stumble on an issue in like a good lot, like everything looks good, and then there's one comic book where it's like, oh, it looks like a five year old did yeah, this. And yeah. you're like, oh, wonder what happened in production where they're like, <laughs> like fucking like twelve hours till I got to press it. We're like, this whole thing has got to start over. We got to start over. I've I've asked that question to some people, the people who are into comic books, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's absolutely like deadlines. Yeah. Right, they they have their story, and they have their main artists and and, and the art team. Mm -hmm. But when that team it sort of lags behind, they have to get this like second string or a second guy. And I, it's probably a lot like how news stories used to be. Like, right, we've kind of evolved to a point where everyone can kind of do their own thing. They can write it, cut it, and edit it all on an iPad and everything. But it used to be, you'd go out and you'd shoot it. And then you'd kind of have a soft shooting deadline to have the story back to the newsroom so that someone could write it. They would have a hard writing deadline so that it could go to the editor so that they would have enough time to put it together. And then the editors would have a hard deadline of when the story had to air. Um, where, it, But those deadlines are just like constantly people pushing a little bit more mm -hmm. like being like... We 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 need a little bit more time to draw this, otherwise it's just not going to work. Or people being like, "We're I need to write for an extra day, otherwise it's not going to work." And then all that time comes out of like whoever's got the last job, who's just like, "I have 15 minutes to make <laughs> yeah. this a book and <laughs> <laughs> send it in." Yeah, and I forget, oh, Castlevania. Like um, there was a just a noticeable drop in animation quality that really really bugged me then that i couldn't finish the second season and there's always like a diff like you never know like for the first season of something how long like they might have worked on this thing and then been like hey netflix we have this thing and netflix yeah, is like is. yeah it's perfect let's do it but then netflix is like okay you have a year yeah to get us to the, get next the next thing one. and yeah. we want you to double the episodes or whatever and then all of a sudden it's like well we're working on each episode for half the time that we mm -hmm. worked on the old ones so mm-hmm and that sucks, right? Because then, I mean, in my case, they, they lost a viewer yeah. in that way. And I don't know, I don't know what's going on in the third one, but Dracula. Yeah, running, so running Peter, Peter Stormar in that third one, I remember. Oh, yeah. I don't think I knew that was him. Yeah, the once you know it's him, you're like, oh. Then you probably uh, can't is. unhear yeah. him, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's like that uh, Norwegian... Model vampire the berserker mm -hmm. the 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 viking vampire i might have only got like one episode into that third season and been like what am i doing he's in two he's a big part of two he's one of the like two? vampire lieutenants <laughs> he wants to make people into boats i remember and they're like this is you are so stupid <laughs> uh one is dope that that, 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 that stupid that part at the end of one where the uh castle just teleporting all over the place yeah. and just like fucking wrecking the city yeah, i love that's dope oh yeah. I, that is so rad yeah blinking in and out super fast Honestly, like I would have loved if it, like, if season one ended with them, like the three of them walking away from <laughs> Dracula's dead body, and then they're just like, "Cut it, that's it, we're not making any more." And I'm like, "Yes." And then the video games happened. <laughs> I think that whole story, that whole Dracula story, they've they've told a really good Dracula story yeah. throughout, like that whole. I don't know. 
The anime... The whole Castlevania lore is, is very good and interesting. The anime does a good job of making... I, I think the game lore, like, gets kind of stupid and up its own ass eventually, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but the, the anime does a good job of, like, laying all that stuff out. And, and using, like... There's a lot of it's from, like, Castlevania 4, like, L w Wallachia and... Uh, like a lot of the a lot of that first season is out of I can't remember which Castlevania game, but a specific Castlevania game. Mm. Which Belmont is it? Trevor. Trevor. Yeah. Good. I really good voice acting too. I like uh, Alucard and, and Trevor's voice actors a lot. Richard Armitage. Do you guys remember the Castlevania for PS3? Uh, Lords of Shadow. Lords of Shadow. Yeah, that's what it was called. Fuck With that, Sir that. Patrick. That was a really good uh, take on the Castlevania themes. I don't think I ever played that. No? Wasn't Sir Patrick they, they like your, your voice in your ear the whole game and then you found out at the end that he was one of the yeah. demon lords or something? Yeah. Fuck. Sorry, spoilers. My trust is shaken. I remember that Sir game Patrick. being not great. I remember it like wasn't to, great. Trying to climb on, like, it was like Shadows of the Colossus, like you're trying to climb on mm -hmm. big enemies, but it kind of didn't work well. It and... wasn't great, but I remember the story that they told because the guy that you play... I don't really remember his name. I'm sorry, Brando, but he's oh, he's the one that actually turns into Dracula. Okay. Yeah. Vladimir Tepesh? I don't know. But he is in... Uh, he's voiced by some actor, Carlisle. They even in the anime, they even make Alucard not seem stupid, even though it being Dracula backwards is super fucking stupid. I know. Where he's like, that's not my real name. They just got um, Dracula inverted. Bitch. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Alucard was always a cool character. Though. Yeah, but like, it's literally Dracula backwards is so dumb. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So dumb. And maybe it's just dumb now. Maybe maybe back in the day it was like, what? Like Alucard's it's not a, it. Alucard's not a bad name. Like it sounds like a name that might exist back then. Yeah. It's just when someone tells you, oh yeah, it's Dracula backwards, you're like, oh. Yeah. Also, well, right. it's his son. It's Dracula's son, and he yeah. just put his own name yeah. backwards. Yeah. She'd be like if you named your son Joe. It's J-O. <laughs> well, thinking man. Joke what? There for you. <laughs> uh, are you playing any video games? Or? Uh, since last time I was here, I finished The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, shit. Which is an incredible video game mm -hmm. that you guys have talked at length about. Mm -hmm. But my take is that, fuck, is that ever a really good video game? And that's the kind of video game that I definitely like. Yeah? Yeah. Um, like basically they just railroad me along a story and I can push buttons because mm -hmm. the video gamey parts they put just enough actual game in there that it's not like a like a walking sim or something where you're like oh I'm just kind of here to experience it but they don't put so much video game in there that it gets in the way of there's no you're never running up there's never objectives on a map you're like fuck I gotta get these 30 things yeah yeah. There's one point in that game where it is. And it's true, yeah. but the and scope is yeah. is is uh, it's very, very narrow, narrow but yeah. very like highly uh, polished. Yeah. And even the points where they sort of uh, sent me off in and in, in to like uh traverse Seattle to get to the aquarium or whatever mm -hmm. and I'm going through wrecked buildings and I pretty much have to d run the perimeter of each room to to get supplies that kind of sucked for me yeah but also missed too many shots the <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the detail in that that game is like absolutely incredible it's like wow like nothing secondary to none you might say it, it could yeah. be the best looking video game in existence mm -hmm. right now and like the most polished video game that maybe i've ever played at least for something that's doing that scope like mm -hmm. Just not clipping through a single thing. Fabric. Not, yeah. Fabric animation looks so fucking good. You never get the, like, jacket clipping through arms. Yeah. For me, fabric and hair were the two things I'm like, holy fucking shit. This is and the there's, stuff look good. there's, like, algorithm stuff that one of their, like, coders has put up about how they, uh, the different factors that went into how heavy they were breathing. Uh, oh, really? So it's like, like well, yeah, their heartbeat. Yeah, and, and, and they have like, well, this is the value for how scared she is, and this is the value for how much you've been physically exerting her, and then these values come together to produce like a unique like amount of like 
heavy breathing what I'm doing. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You almost <laughs> killed yourselves to do the fucking breathing. I, you just, it should just be light, medium, and heavy breathing. <laughs> yeah, what's, they're like, everything top to bottom in that game is just so incredibly... The way the glass breaks. Oh, the best yeah. breaking glass yeah. I've ever seen. Oh. Yeah, I love just smashing through those yeah. fucking vending machines. Yeah. Or and just like, like I'll this break. is gonna be loud, but I want to fucking do this. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'll break every window I come yeah. across because yeah. I love yeah, the way the glass good. breaks. Um, the good like vandalism. When do they, you find a couple of shops that are relatively intact, and it is like really cathartic. Well, I'm gonna smash this yeah. big fucking window. One of these gonna... arcade games. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's that um, Chinatown area where you're in. Mm -hmm. It's in the China shop or whatever. What is it? They just call yeah. them shops when they're in Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I'm just smashing shit, the and I'm like, <laughs> "Bullet in China shop, you guys." That's the that's the that's the kind of thing they sell, not the. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, honestly. Did you find the precursor orb in the China shop? No, I. <laughs> No, I did not see the precursor orb in the shop. I don't shop. know if I did either. You guys talked about that. And I'm like, oh, crazy. I didn't yeah, know. Was Sir, I know you found Sir Francis' ring because that's yep. how you got the achievement for it. Mm. Yeah, that was. It's in the vault? In the bank. Yeah. In the bank yeah. vault, yeah. That's cool shit. Like, yeah. and, and apparently that's the, the bar that I sort of set for all video games because that game. Well, you two know better than anybody how how i fall in out of games right mm -hmm. but this game kept me playing kept me going and i'm like fuck this is a good it's ass game. very much that naughty dog style of yeah. like, the uncharted games and and just those yeah barely barely open world not open world at all but like just giving you enough like kind of nooks and crannies to poke in but basically you're going straight ahead mm -hmm. the whole time and they're telling you a story those are also among my favorite genre of video games i'm a big fan of those mm -hmm. too so yeah the last of us two really worked for me and uh, for as much as we've talked about control and how much I, I, I want to play control and I know what I'm getting into with control as far as um, the quality of the, the technical runs and everything, quality, yeah. like that, I don't know if that's going to be off-putting to me. I hope it's not because I do want to experience that game as well. But again, coming off of The Last of Us into it's, that game, that might. Yeah, I think the first game you play after Last of Us is... Sometimes, like, this isn't Last of Us is the first thing that you think. The tough act to follow. Yeah. Super tough act to follow. Ghost of Soshima was mine, and yeah. Ghost of Soshima looks really, really good, but, like, they'd have the conversations with two people, like, in, in an open world game, you have the two people looking at each other, and you'll just flip ISOs when they're talking to each other, and I was like, these guys would probably look great if I didn't just play Last of Us, and now all I can think of is, like, their face is barely moving when they talk. So... You're, okay, here, you're probably going to get a bit of that. Here's a question. Uh -huh. I have Ghost of Shima, Tsushima in my hands right now, and I can get control almost immediately. It, am I doing myself a disservice by playing control at, right after The Last of Us? I think you'll be okay. You think so? I think yeah. control is different enough that it actually might be easier to be like, oh, this is nothing like Last of Us, whereas Ghost of Tsushima... I think because it was a even newer game than The Last of Us, I was like, oh, this will be better and look better and run better. And it didn't in a lot of ways. So it <laughs> ran well. Um, but yeah, okay. I would probably do Control first. I think yeah. Control is just a better video be a game good, too. A good like palate cleanser. Okay, good. Also, it's a very different kind of storytelling though. Like it is not the linear, like you kind of poking around in the nooks and crannies of this big building. To kind of find the story okay. in a way that it's not kind of put out on a plate for you the way it is in Last of Us. Yeah. That might be a thing for me, too. Mm -hmm. no. Have you finished Final Fantasy, Oliver? No. I, I, was, I was saying how I, I did put that in right after I finished The Last of Us, like, the same weekend. Yeah. And I'm at a point where I'm like, ah, this is really not, this is kind of not what I want to play right now. No? No. Mm. How, uh... But, bang your sword on the doorframe? You bang your sword on the doorframe? What is that? What? Cloud goes to attack someone, and he pulls his door out, and it, it pulls his sword out, and it hits the top of the door frame because he's—I don't know if you know—he has a very big sword. It's giant, yeah. It's very big, and he goes Tuh! and looks up at it, and you're like, "Definitely the moment the game had us all." They know. <laughs> They're in on the joke too. No, I don't think you're coming up to. We were talking about this a little bit yeah, on air. You're saying. coming up to some of the best stuff uh, that I personally thought was some of the best stuff in that game. 
Yeah, where where the game? Because I was like very much kind of on the fence. Like I, I never played the first one. I don't, I don't know. And then there is a uh, it's called a, a, a quick time event in a wall market. Mm-hmm. A big scene. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and once even before that, even leading up to that scene, where like you got to kind of get some uh, some side quests done and get some materials and things and make some choices. And mm-hmm. even when I was making the choices, I'm like fucking a, here we go. That game knows, but it doesn't let you know that it knows until like halfway through. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh no, they okay. They know how weird this is for all of us. Yes, Westerners. now we're <laughs> now we're really getting into this. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it was very much a like put the game down as soon as that moment happened and text Matt being like, I found the thing. I'm at the thing that you guys <laughs> yeah. told me about, and it's amazing. <laughs> Dude, have you seen? Yes, it's so good. Uh, the thought that I'm I'm sort of having is I sort of know what that point in the game is because mm-hmm. you've played Final Fantasy yeah. seven and I'm kind of like off put by that sort of goofiness it, like that that, mm. that weird what anime if everyone takes it really seriously though in the context of the world that's kind of off putting as well yeah. because I'm like I know this is shitty I I know this is weird and I know what you guys are trying to get at yeah what, what, maybe I don't know because there's a lot of difference to to how they kind of sounds like you're working around the thing that you might know what we're yeah. getting yeah. at you but, yeah. you you I think you do know yeah but it it's just, it's it was it's just presented so well okay. and like, I also did not have the original context for it so like when I saw it I was just like I was blown away yeah. I was like this is like. It's like there was someone who put this together and and is just like it's fucking hilarious and and he's showing it to the people in the in the game studio and they're like I don't get it and they're like the people who get it will fucking get yes, it. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. Fucking yeah. what's that guy Andrea? Is that that guy's name? Yeah, I think so. Andrea is maybe best new character of the year, Andrea. Who's well, uh, he might not oh, be a new character. Him. Can't yeah. call him a new character. Mm. Best new character of the year Tifa. Vegeta. Yeah, Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta. There's a new Goku this year, and we could get Goku in there for uh, sure. That's true. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot came out. I'll play it. I, I, you guys. That's the enthusiasm I like to hear. Yeah. You guys are. Uh, my only, I guess. Only video game influence that I have now, so I'll fucking. Play that you're gonna it. call me an influencer? I was about to. I can mute your mic at the drop of a hat now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like. Good. There's there's video games that yeah, I'm kind of games. into, yeah. which is is great for me. There's games coming out too, which I'm actively ignoring, trying to uh, make sure there's something to play when those new consoles come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Watch Dogs, I think, just came out. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed can't be that far away. I think it's new. I think it's the day the new consoles come out. Well, yeah. I think it is a launch title. Launch, yeah. It's where there's not a lot to play on those new consoles that you could not play on your current consoles yeah. if you have them. Demon Soul, well, yeah, the Demon Souls won't be on PS4, I don't think. Yeah, no, I think Demon Souls is be one like of the, the only, only one. game. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how the last couple, well, at least the last uh, console launch was. Eh? They had the, um, the current generation ones and the next generation ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're and always, console launch is always, there's never been a good console launch lineup. No, no. Well, N64. N64. But I remember buying into them in a way that I'm like, fuck yeah, like new oh, yeah. consoles, and every fucking new games, yeah. and all, all that type of shit. The hype. The the controller. The PS5. Everyone is like going Losing nuts their about the controller in a way the that, controller. like seasoned veterans who have held controllers before in, 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 in one, one giant bomb.com is mm-hmm. fucking obsessed with the controller yep. in a way that I... Cannot wait to get my hands on it. Mm-hmm. What are they saying? What are they? The saying? haptic feedback and stuff is apparently crazy. Like you can feel when you're moving from carpet to hardwood on your hands, and yeah, it sounds bonkers, man. Uh, mm. Demon Souls is gonna have a bunch of that stuff too. Apparently, they have a bunch of new like haptic. They say like you can you can feel in your sword if you're striking wood, or if you hit the stone wall, or if it like clangs off that metal. Seems super neat. Off the door frame, even. Off the door frame. Oh, oh that shit! Felt different. <laughs> Dunk. Shit. Uh, yeah, it seems. It seems just added to the joke. You just sort of laughed at how it felt in your hands. <laughs> it seems like a new, the new feature to get excited about. <clears throat> yeah, where like consoles and, and 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 the load times thing. Yeah, those are the two totally. big ones for me. Uh, but like consoles and PCs are just so similar that like you know it's kind of just a new it, the games look better mostly right xbox 360 to xbox one the games looked better did we get any new functionality not really mm-hmm. we lost we did we took the connect out yep we sort of lost functionality and the games just kind of i, I never felt like the games looked way better when those consoles launched yeah. i felt like the game started to look better during the life of that that console but totally. but I, I like it's i don't think i'm gonna pop in my ps5 i mean the hdr 
uh, which PS4 already has, uh, and some of the new model Xbox ones. Uh, but some of the 4K capabilities and stuff are going to be nice that mm-hmm. my old consoles didn't have. But for the most part, I'm not expecting to put these things in and be like, oh, it's like playing a new game. Yeah. We like we haven't had a new like short shy of controls changing and they and they haven't changed in a long time because they're just sort of standardized mm. like consoles. The PS4 from the PS3 is kind of the, it's almost exactly the same, right? They look better. Uh, although I guess the architecture PS5 is. is fucking huge. Generally. Massive. Yes, those the, memes the are very funny. The physical the size of the PS5. It's is good. Unbelievable. It's 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 checking all my boxes. I like it's it's kind of kind of shapely like a lady. It's uh, uh-huh. way bigger than than I am. Yeah, like, it's like drink a water. It's like Abby. It's like what yeah. if Abby was a console? Yeah, no kidding. I need this. <laughs> hey, PS Five, can you lift the fridge for me so I can vacuum under it? No. Uh, the what are you what are you so, like looking at me? What it's fine to be yeah, into I'm Abby sure, and yeah. strong. Like, I like to be held. All right. Okay. Yeah. And somebody can protect me. Um. The it is it's crazy that the PlayStation Five is like as big as it is without the fins. And then they're like, this isn't big enough yet. And put the big plastic yeah. fins on it. Like it was already bigger than the Xbox. We need to make it taller. And they're like, make it taller. What do we put a make crown a on the top? What are you talking about? Like this? Yay big? Uh, uh, I think it's, it's bigger than that. Probably bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. Taller. Taller than that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like it's 16 not. inches tall. Yeah. Wowzers. I feel like that's about the size of the Xbox. Yeah. So we're uh, pointing at a water bottle yeah, here in the studio. Sorry, for, yeah. It probably doesn't play. For context, a big two a liter big water, water bottle. bottle yeah. Hmm. They're very that's, big. Yeah, that's big. Very, very big. But apparently, they like they the the hardware sounds really good this time mm. in a way that it has never really. There's always been some kind of yeah. like the CPUs in current gen consoles are pretty bad, even even when they were brand new. Mm. Um, but the new hardware sounds like at least for a while, consoles yeah. will be like kind of the the leading edge of unless you're out there buying the brand new graphics cards for mm. thousands of dollars. Uh, it's cool that consoles are like kind of top of the. God damn it! I punched this mic a lot. <laughs> Top of the uh, tech tier. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, as a PC player and a guy that likes his PC gaming. Oh, love it! Uh, you're mm. you're impressed with these new consoles? Yeah, totally. Because they the, the the no load times doesn't exist on PC. SSDs exist, but PC you can't guarantee that everyone has the same uh, drive. You can't you can't build games with the spec in mind. So the like. The, the no load time thing will only exist on consoles, at least for now. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's going to change the way the games are, are fundamentally made, yes. and that hasn't happened in, in a long time. Interesting that you point that out, too. And I'm, I'm thinking about my time with The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. And other than starting at the very beginning and having it load into the game, like, I've always just, like, kind of suspended that game, and then it would always just jump in and out. So I never actually witness any sort of loading in that game either even like you die and have to reset and that takes yeah, 35 guess, to 40 seconds i guess there would be that little and then a lot of the stuff they hide behind cutscenes, like and, crawling through a thing and, mm-hmm. and cut scenes yeah, there's a lot of like yo squeeze through this sideways mm-hmm. narrow spot mm-hmm. in in that last of us game. but and that i think we've had this conversation before but that's the stuff that i don't necessarily want them to take out like yeah. every now and then i like the little like cinematic moment where I can catch my breath a little bit mm-hmm. yeah. until a fucking zombie arm breaks out of the wall and grabs me by the neck or something but yeah but we, it doesn't have to be like God of War was kind of bad for it too mm. where it's like obviously we need to stream in this next area so you're gonna crawl through a narrow little thing for a while yeah well on some of the like the Bifrost thing uh, things where it was just like just spinning and you can tell like this is just loading yeah we're not even really hiding this load screen yeah. like you run around a little bit of like uh, idle banter yeah it's gonna be really interesting though. It's gonna like it will fundamentally change or should change game design in a way that maybe maybe you'll have options where like, oh, I have this drive on the PC. Check this box for, for no load times on the PC or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be weird. And also that haptic controller. Like oh I cannot wait to to people are describing it like you can uh, uh they're doing like the you know the switch they had uh, the HD rumble and it was like, oh guess how many ice cubes are in the in the oh, cup. Yeah. Uh, people are describing the, the the PlayStation controller in like uh, you can like shake your gun and like oh I can feel that this clip is getting lights or like the way that it feels like it's jostling I can tell I need to reload soon. That's fucked. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it seems so dope. I'm excited. Me too. Finally, here a week before new consoles. So. I don't think I'm gonna get mine <laughs> when it launches. 
You're what? My oh, console. yeah. You and I, we think we're a week behind. Like we, yeah. I kind of yeah. at least like at least like one of them. I'm worried I'm not even on the first order because I did get an email at some point about the PlayStation being like, "You're on back order. We're trying to fill it." And then a lot of people uh, were saying that that email was a mistake. Uh, but my email came in after the email that they put out saying it was a mistake. So I'm like, well, maybe my email wasn't a mistake. That's weird. And um, like, so the I think that's my PlayStation and the and what my play where my PlayStation falls into this whole thing, I'm not sure about. But my Xbox, I think, looks like it'll be about a week after the actual launch day. Yeah, I I'm in the same boat as you for the PlayStation. But yeah. we they someone like they placed pre-orders. More pre-orders opened up after we placed ours. Mm-hmm. In a way that I was, because I was with you, you I hope that our yeah. pre-orders would get filled first. I was like, yeah. oh, we're on the back order, let's fuck. But then more pre-orders opened up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, we're good. And I got charged, but like you, they the charge went off, and I don't know. That happened to you too. Yeah. Okay. But that also happens like a lot. That doesn't mean anything. yeah, because I I don't remember what I ordered. Something. I was sad to see it though. I ordered like, there like was a, something about seeing the hold on sig- over a grand of purchases from Walmart and being like. Yeah, baby. Maybe they're just Come checking. To daddy. <laughs> maybe maybe Wally's just making sure you got the scratch. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what I ordered, but some some big electronic thing. I didn't get charged until after I like had it after it shipped and delivered, and I thought I was gonna get it for free. I'm like, oh, I snuck through the cracks. This is like the vibe when they sent me an extra vibe. Woo. Uh, but then it showed up, and like a week later, they charged me for it. Yeah. Pricks. Yeah. How much are those consoles? The the next gen. Yeah. yeah. Six hundred twenty ish. All in. Yeah. Four. Twenty nine. Five ninety nine, four ninety nine, um, yeah, Ameri- for yeah, like my like the number that yeah. I paid was like six twenty nine for one of them for the, and six forty nine for the other, and we can never figure out what I paid extra for the other one. Oh, because but... you got a disc edition, right? I got a disc edition. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. hundred dollars. So mine less. were the same price. Yeah, I think five. Mine was like right at right around five hundred bucks for the digital. Digital, no disc. Yeah, yeah. I had to get a disc because my podcast co-host is always passing around discs. Yeah. We should uh, tie a, like we, we should bind our, some, I, not you and I, but we yeah. as a podcast should put our groups of twos, our like family sharing together because we could be sharing games left, right, and center without passing yeah, discs. You and yeah. you and Kevin discovered that recently. Yeah. <laughs> it's great right here in like the last three months of these fucking consoles. Kevin and I, I figured out that we can just. that. Hopefully not. Uh, no, they said it's like working as designed. The only and caveat, the idea yeah, because it's it, like right? you, you who own the X, you, you and your brother shouldn't have to buy a game twice, right? Is kind of the, but is working thinking. as designed include you doing this with someone who is not your brother? Yeah, one yeah, other they person. Can't, they yeah. can't really control. Yeah. That, no, they can't. But, no, I absolutely yeah. think they and can't like, control it. You have to pay for PSN Plus to be able to do it, so it's like it's a premium they're service they some offer. Money, yeah, and, yeah, it. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. It was too bad we figured out too late because it. It seems illegal where, like, we could buy one copy of a multiplayer game and we could both play that copy of the multiplayer game together at the same time. Mm-hmm. One of us has to be online is the only caveat. Right. It's wild. It's not a very bad caveat. Yeah, it's it's really wild. Hmm. It's neat. Xbox has a thing like that, too. I don't remember how... Xbox currently has... Well, yeah, I guess PlayStation does, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Warren and Monch do some stuff with that. Where... Yeah, it's, it's. I think it's... Ex- like the the same with different rules. But. I didn't talk to you about Warren <laughs> turning on your Xbox a hundred uh, times, eh? He did. Yeah, yeah, we figured out the ghost that turned on my Xbox was actually Warren. <laughs> who? So he must have. It was something to play Rock Band one time because we, we have all the DLC on Warren's account, right? So we must have made my Xbox the Warren's home Xbox or something. Yeah. But the other crazy part is like it worked fine for years, and then this new update for the for the mobile app came out, and that apparently broke everything. Where one day Warren just started turning my Xbox on with his app, and we couldn't figure out what the fuck was happening. Well, Warren had never like it might have always been that kind of broken because Warren had never tried to turn his Xbox on with his app before this. Mm. Like we just started playing around with this new update with our phones to see what you could do on your phone, yeah, in terms of remote play and everything. And War, mine was working, and Warren kept hitting his, and he's like, "Yeah, mine just won't. Mine's not working. It's not turning my Xbox on." Meanwhile, and, and then we were getting messages from Eads being like. There's a ghost in my Xbox. Yeah, it's like, fuck, my Xbox. I had to unplug my Xbox today. It wouldn't stop turning itself on. And then Warren texted me. He's like, yo, go to your Xbox. I'm like, okay. You're like, did it just turn on? And then it turned on. I'm like, you, it was you, Warren. Yeah. That was so fuck. Fuck, I was laughing, though, yeah. when Warren, like, because Warren's like, there, there's probably no way that's what's happening. But as soon as he said it, I was like, I kind of think that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, and it totally was. Yeah, that was funny. Any other games, Oliver? Last of Us, you finished? Going to be Last starting Control here right away? Yeah. Uh, I told you a really quick story about how I had the hankering to play Metal Gear 5. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I dug it out of the like this old shoebox of stuff, mm-hmm. and I opened up the case, and there was no disc. 
Kevin probably has it. But also, you did the exact same thing with Spider-Man, which you totally had, and were like, I know you have my Spider-Man! Like, no, over I don't, and then you found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that happened as yeah. well. You phoned me, I was like, I need more games with Spider-Man! <laughs> like, actually, I don't have them. Yeah. Uh, you might you might lend it to Kev. Yeah, I know he played five. I mean, I'll, and... I'll check under his his drinks. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look under the beer can. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that that was kind of upsetting because I was like I really wanted to play Metal Gear. Yeah. You heard you heard the the all the nukes actually weren't disarmed. You're like fuck. They yeah, need I, me. Yeah. Back they need in me. there. Yeah. Uh, that was sort of brought on because I was looking for some music to listen to and. Um, Spotify has this Metal Gear Solid Five playlist with like all the fucking nineteen eighty four era music that you, that they put in that game. They also have like the uh, yeah man eaters. They also have like the uh, all the music they put into the trailers yep. getting up to it. Yeah. yeah, like fucking this is all good. That is all good. Yeah. It's all good music. Man who uh, sold the world? Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. They have like nuclear is one of the trailer that songs. One, that one. I don't which one's I don't know that song, I don't think. Nuclear. Uh, I only know it from that. So it was an actually a really good trailer. It was trailer. a banger for like the trailer, works? yeah. Is it like a Yeah, yeah. Who sings? What artist? Mike Oldfeld. No idea. I'm Playing nuclear. You yeah. You'll remember it when you see it. Yeah, it was a great trailer. Bars. Yeah. I'm nuclear. I'm nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. What am, what am I saying? Song. Not nuclear. Nuclear? Nuclear. 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 It's about a nucleus. I it's don't nuclear. know what that word even means anymore. We've said it so many times. Are you going to finish Final Fantasy VII? We, if you like spoiler casts, we got a really good spoiler cast on Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Great Stand year by that podcast cast. being better than the game. Here, here. Yeah. Yes, here, here. <laughs> I, mm, yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's, I don't. I like the game, too. There is a moment of the too... year. In, yes. At least a moment of the year yep. in Final Fantasy For sure. And, I like that game, and I really should finish it. It's, it, again, like... It it ramps up in a way. You, I, I know what's ha I know what's going to happen in this part, and I'm like, I don't really you want do? to play anything like this. You, you sort of think you know it's yeah. yeah, I think you're yeah. going to get a lot out of what does and doesn't happen as someone who is playing. Like, when I did that spoiler cast, uh, I never would have gone and played the original, but I did have a regret that I didn't have the knowledge of the original game because it sounds like they use that knowledge yeah. to better the experience for people who have played that original game. Yeah, totally. Yes, I will. Now, is... now I have... Three games that I have in front of me, and it's going to be that fucking what is it? Uh, choice paranoia or no, choice? Selfie's oh, choice. Yeah. Par paralyzation par paralysis. Mm -hmm. That's right? the one. New and then I'm just not going to play anything. Uh, just stare at them. I yeah. I will say that seven, rank them. <laughs> seven is uh, no Final Fantasy Seven remake is like the sequel, the follow up to. They are doing some different things in a way that. Much like Mr. Spock, Mr. Spock, they are doing some different things. Mm -hmm. And yes, you you who you think you know what's which everything happen. everything that I've seen thus far is actually really good. They fleshed out uh, minor characters from that first game or from the original game, which I I totally like. And can't, I can't really say too much, but you should finish it. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Ghost. No, we'll see. Seems like an awesome game. Uh, yeah. that, that would Matt be the one said. I rank the lowest. That would be my least. You is who, it fun to play though? It is. It yeah. is fun to play. But you who just said like you like a game to railroad you yeah. and not give you a this thousand is, yeah. collectibles. Yeah. This is the antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is you 10, have to railroad collectibles. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's super fun to play. That's why I like the co-op so much yeah. actually. Was. That's why I did 30 hours of collectibles because I liked just fighting the dudes who were keeping me away from the collectibles. Yeah. It's very fun. Yeah, that's me though. I the uh, games are on my horizon. Hell yes, Horizon's on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Oh, Horizon. Yeah, Oliver only plays uh, PS4 exclusives. Aguilar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Brandon, what you been playing? Uh, well, I rolled credits on Hades, mm -hmm. which uh came after. So I I uh, had my first run. Mm -hmm. Uh, you called me a braggart. Mm -hmm. Because I had, I did not. You had not had your first yet. run, but and, then you got your first yeah. and second run done before and I had a second run done. Like Kevin says, they come very fast after that first yeah. one. And I went like cold after my first win. I think I did five runs and like wasn't getting past <laughs> the third boss. And I'm like, well, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> this might have been a one and done for old Brando. <laughs> uh, and then I rattled off like I think six in a row. Um, no, I'd be more than that because I finished the game, so it's probably eight in a row. Yeah. Um, and uh my fucking god that game is is great oh. and it, it like 
I, I, I like that I have what is now like a story ending mm-hmm. to that game. I've, I've seen kind of the content that's there, but it also sets you up after the story ending to just be like, you got to keep playing. You keep playing as long as you want. Keep doing runs. Stuff will keep unlocking. Always going to be way more game. New there. dialogue here somehow for you to hear as though we're recording it live. Right. Um, so I'm excited to not feel like I need to play it every waking second because I want to fin it, quote unquote, finish it. Mm-hmm. But also once credits roll, then they're just like, just always have this game with you in your car and you can play it whenever you want. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's time to move my time to go buy a second switch charger and put it in my car because the switch is never going docked again. It's uh, like I'm, I'm trying to sell to Warren who, you know, doesn't he says he doesn't really like those those roguelike style of games. Mm-hmm. And like Hades is doing something different in that space, but it's such a hard sell of like, no, the, the yeah, I get that you don't like other games like that but this like the loop in this one is such a yeah core it's such a different thing it's weaved in so differently and like it is tough because at the end of the day it is like if you, you kind of cut everything aside all the brilliant writing and how good it looks and the great music and everything it is a they're just doing runs yeah they're just doing runs and runs and runs and the bosses change a little bit here and there but but generally they are the bosses and and if you don't like the bells and whistles, then maybe, maybe that, maybe this is the game that Warren thinks it is for him where he's just like, I just don't want to do the same thing over and over. Yeah. Again. But for me, as someone who also does not play a lot of roguelikes, uh, I, this was the one and I knew early where I was like, I'm going to play this for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Like, it, it is so well done. It's very, if, if you at home have kind of got hung up on the, on the, maybe you don't like roguelikes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's very, very different. It, it is. Still one of those, but yeah. like it, it is. It's not, tough to describe how it's different. Yeah, like it's you're, there's not this progress. Like other roguelikes, the the loop gets kind of frustrating, where it's like you get up to a point and then you need to do the loop until you progress past it. Right. But Hades, the progression, you do still have that. I'm getting farther in the run, but the progression is much more everything around it, like the dialogue and the characters and and the story, which it seems incredible. And it feels like you very in in comparison to other roguelikes, you very quickly see that final boss the first time yeah totally like it does not take a lot of runs to get to uh the end it took me a lot of runs to beat the final boss um but like i knew exactly what that game was offering from start to finish in terms of like the enemies and everything uh very early like 15 runs in i'm like okay this is the game uh and then it just has a very good way of keeping you going and making like at the end of the day the reason you want to keep playing is because it's like i want to start a run and just see what they give me early yeah and maybe it's just like oh i'm gonna break the game with this i'm gonna i'm gonna just run around pressing y and the room i'm in is just gonna be exploding all around me or maybe it's one where i have to play more skilled or maybe it's something where i'm focusing on cast and never actually use my my basic or special attack yeah it's it is it is super special like every run is just so different we've talked a lot about on the show so Mm -hmm. we'll keep it pretty brief this week but it is and the story ends up really it's a really nice story. It's a sweet yeah. story. Yeah. I'm, I haven't seen the end of it yet, but I've really, really liked what I've heard, like the writing and the, mm-hmm. the characters in a way that none of the other super giant games have really done it for me. Yep. Uh, everything is so good. That fucking narrator is just so good. goddamn good in this game. Mm-hmm. Oh, I said in the discord that I could go to sleep to, uh, the sound of Hades writing on his parchment oh, at yeah. the desk in the starting room. I just like stand there and hear him like scribbling on it. And I'm like, oh, that's I like when he scoffs at you. Yeah. Like when he's like, Puh, that didn't take long. Yes. Fuck you, dad. <laughs> he's a bit of a prick. Yeah. Oh, it's so good though. Uh, also played the Doom DLC. Uh, well, I played part, a few hours of it. Yeah. Part one of two? Of two called The Ancient Gods, I believe it's called. You think I would have looked that up? Um, it is definitely more Doom. Mm hmm. I fucking re-realized how fucking much I love Doom 2 or Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal. Yeah. Um, it is uh, largely the same, except you start with all your upgrades that you found during the game. Do you do you start with everything you have unlocked, or does it give you everything? If I haven't played I base had game. everything, so I don't know. Hmm. Um, I think it would... I think you are bringing over everything that you had unlocked. Okay. Uh, but because I 100% of the game, I had the whole wheel... Um, and it's, uh, they add, <laughs> stop carving up my table, <laughs> all of Oliver. <laughs> knife game. <laughs> um, uh, they add, add a few new things. They add like, uh, eye of Sauron looking turrets, uh, that you have to shoot, um, or they'll absolutely roast you. Okay. Uh, and they add, uh, a few new enemy types. 
Um, is there anything like any any like wild new mechanics of like oh you gotta uh, uh, these crazy way you gotta push the green button on this guy's back? Oh, and then... there's a there's a um, I think they're called spirits, and it's like a ghost thing will be on the battlefield, and it will uh, like possess one of the other demons, mm -hmm. and I think that gives them more health and makes them stronger and everything. And then once you kill that demon, it becomes a ghost again, and you have to use your microwave mod on your your uh, one gun. of your your on your plasma gun yeah. uh, to fry him before he just goes mm. into another demon. That's kind of cool. So that's pretty fun. Um, they've added support ruins. Uh, runes. <laughs> runes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> runes. Uh, support runes to um, uh, all your like you have a you had like nine different runes you could. Yeah, it was like select. make your make your and they were all like, you go three, faster three after grenade, doing a, a glory, a glory kill and and stuff like yeah. that. Um, they added three support ones just, I think, so they had new things that you could equip, uh, for the new DLC and you can have one of the three equipped, uh, at any time, mm -hmm. but you have to unlock all three of them separately. And there are things like, you remember the one ups? Yep. You can find one ups and they were basically just one offs. When you die, it'll just let you keep playing. It'll give you health back and it'll let you keep playing, but then you never get that one up back. So I was never super gung ho about getting them because sometimes I'd go on a run and get three stacked up, but then I'd run into something hard and it would get rid of all three of them. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. Easy come, easy yeah, go. I'm I'm gonna die and just respawn anyway. Um this uh one of the runes you uh if an enemy kills you, he takes your one up and Ooh. then you can kill him uh back and get the one up back if you kill that enemy That's in cool. a certain amount of time. Yeah. So so do you 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 would die and respawn and then have to race back to that person? No, level? it's it's you you respawn right there. It's oh, like a, it's a almost like a chance. flash. Yeah, it's a second chance where it's just like you lost all your health. He took your one up. Your health comes back a little bit because you, you it's using your one up. Uh, but if you kill that enemy really quickly, then you can have that one up back. Whereas normally it would just be gone forever after they after you lose your health. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and there's one where if you're the kind of player like me that really focuses on doing the, like every enemy kind of has a weakness, like the mancubus as you try and shoot their arms off and everything. Uh, whenever you get those precision shots, it does like big AOE explosion damage. So I found that to be very useful. Uh, and then I think the third one has something to do with your melee punch when you're below 75% is like a supercharged punch or something. So they have any new weapons? Not that I've seen yet, but I'm only through the first level. Okay. Um, it seems like there's some game there. Like yeah. I don't think it's. I think it's pretty long. Um, or or new mod, maybe not whole new guns, but new new yeah, mods or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's something. There That'd be crazy. Be something, yeah. BFG, um, twenty thousand. It's fucking dope. I love that game. That game yeah. puts me in like a like a blinders on focus mode that. Almost no video games do right now. And those, God, are my palms sweaty when I play it. Those, uh, those like challenge rift things where it would like put you in, in your own little level and spawn yeah. X enemies. Yeah, in. the Hellgates. Yeah, yeah, those are really dope. Yeah, they're fun. I would take a like a, a like random Hellgate mode. Just throw me in a, a sort of randomly generated level. Boom, right. boom, boom. Here's the enemies. You do it in two minutes or whatever they Do were. as many rooms as you can without dying yeah. or something oh, like that. Rinse yes. and repeat. Yeah. Yes. That'd something cool. where, yeah, it would just let me get in there and just fucking shoot guys. I think the story uh, for this DLC is interesting uh, more so than the story of 2. Um, ah, yes, the rich story of yeah, 2 that was, I was, yeah, <laughs> super kind of fell, hive. Yeah, 2 really fell flat after 1. Um, and I think this DLC seems more interesting. They're doing some cool stuff with the... S. Hayden character. Ah, yes. Samuel Hayden. Yes. He's a robot man. He's a robot man. Yeah. Or is he? <gasps> I'll let you know. Say, say S. Hayden. Sayden. You get it? Oh, it's... No. It's the devil. Lucifer. Is that right? Lucifer. Yeah, it's the guy, it's the guy who cleans out the sluice. Yeah. It's Lucifer. Lucifer. <laughs> uh, the Doom DLC. Yes. If you like Doom... Uh, first of all, if you didn't like Doom Eternal, I would encourage you to try it again. I think it is fucking amazing. I think it is better than Doom 1 in uh, every gameplay related sense that there is. It just fell flat on the story. Um, but uh, give it a, give it a, maybe give it another try. It's a lot of How fun. How much is that DLC, do you know? I got is it, it for on, free. Is Doom on Game Pass? Yeah, it's, yeah. Is it on Game Pass? Yeah, so okay. I didn't pay for it, so I... I'm 90% sure it's because it's on Game Pass as well, and 10% sure I bought this DLC at some point on some expansion offering that they offered me right yeah, back when I got it. Premium edition yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. 
I might also have that DLC from mm. some premium edition or something. I should check into that. I would think that if I guess I shouldn't say that. I feel like it's on Game Pass. Like Doom Eternal is on Game Pass. I feel like they put the DLC on Game Pass too. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe they, not though. There's yeah, a lot I, of games that are yeah. on Game Pass that that's like they, they, they don't they have the, the deal. DLC. Yeah. yeah, that's how they that's how they get you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if Kevin is listening live or even still in the house. If he is, I hope he comes down to talk about phasmophobia with me. We'll find out. He's listening to a, yeah, he's listening to a stream. So we'll see if the uh, we'll see if he's listening to our stream or not. Uh, I played phasmophobia this weekend mm-hmm. with Kevon on Friday. Uh, it is a up to four players. Uh, like. The, you know, the old like ghost hunting shows where you get our EMF meters and we're going to go around this dark house mm-hmm. and like, uh, it is, it is, it is that you're trying to, uh, determine what type of ghost is in a house. You have to get three pieces of evidence and, and then once you have those three, it'll tell you what type of ghost you're dealing with. Uh, and, and you, you are the team that figures it out. That's it. You're just figuring it out. And, and then the ghostbusters will come later. Uh, so every every uh their jobs are kind of broken into jobs choose different mm. different houses or schools it was an asylum we did um you are uh you have an inventory you're gonna bring stuff with you um and and if you if you die out in the field you lose all your stuff okay um so it's stuff like cameras thermometers you, you're kind of leveling up and unlocking different power-ups uh, an infrared uh, uh thing pke meter uh and we have an emf meter I don't know what's a pk I pke i don't that's know the, that's the that's the ghostbusters thing. one psychokinetic Energy meter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the yeah. We we use the EMF meter, the real one, the okay, electromagnetic yeah, right. field yeah, reader. Yeah, they're not big vacuums all over. Because Ghostbusters <laughs> is yeah based in fa- in a fantasy world. That's right. That's right. This is real ghosts. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a bunch of different type of ghosts. They you have a sanity meter that decreases as you uh, are in the dark, uh, and then it's up to you and up to four friends to get in there, uh, figure out what kind of ghosts you're dealing with, get the evidence, and then get out without dying and and they'll throw you little bonus objectives sometimes which are like uh take a picture of dirty water in a sink or like uh witness a pervert commission that yeah witness a ghost (laughs) event uh it's dirty water yeah so you only have three inventory slots and there are like a bunch of different things you need to carry your flashlight is one of those fucking slots um the houses do have power so you can turn the power on although the ghosts like to kind of turn the main breaker off uh and it's also it, it, it is using your mic where it like it makes you set up the speech recognition thing uh, and it's like you need to have these English packs installed and uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, just keep that in your mind I'll, I'll get to what that's for in a okay. second but you so you're going in you need to figure out basically where is the ghost in the house is usually the first way the, the kind of the first thing that Kevin and I did once you figure out because it'll be kind of localized to a room although sometimes sometimes the ghost will wander uh, once you figure out where it is, which is usually like, I take the thermometer and just kind of like, you know, I'm scanning around and like, oh, I got a, it's only three degrees over here. We got something weird going on. Uh, or like sometimes uh, like a lamp would be flickering. You're like, oh, that lamp is flickering. That's kind of weird. Uh, you kind of find like an initial clue to get you in the right spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we lay down our different types of evidence gathering things. There's like a spirit book where, where you put down and, and you're like, uh, you know, uh, when, when when you leave and come back, they might draw on the book. Um there is uh, salt you can put on the ground and they can leave footprints. There is a video camera that can catch what they call ghost orbs as a type of evidence. Uh, but the video camera you can only watch from the truck. So the other part of this is you have a a like base of operations, a truck, where you can only you can only see through the video cameras from there. So you uh, run into the situation where like one person can stay out in the truck and and keep an eye on the video cameras that's what i would do uh, i'd be truck guy yeah. totally sure. or or i mean we'd all we'd all be truck guy let's, let's yeah. not that yeah. one <laughs> sounds scary and, <laughs> and there's also a activity meter in the truck there's like meters for like you can set up sound sensors and stuff and you you watch all that stuff from the truck and then there's a like paranormal activity meter which goes from from zero to ten oh. so ten uh th- there's this like state the ghost will get agitated sometimes and and all the lights will start flickering and things kind of go crazy when it's at a ten uh when the ghost is hunting you um, but you, that, that is the, that is the core loop. You are in there, place down your evidence and then basically try to incite this ghost to, uh, give you the evidence you need. And if you take too long and your sanity gets too low, or if you witness too many scary events, uh, or sometimes other reasons, uh, you can potentially die. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Kevin and I played on Friday night. We were both pretty inexperienced ghost hunters. Uh, we, we kind of, we kind of got a little it's bit weird because you guys spent a lot of time here. Yeah, well, an experience yeah. video game goes on. Right. You know, a psychic anchor, medium, it's yeah. a little different. Um, 
but we it, it also it all uses in-game voice chat also so you it, it is like local chat whereas you're getting farther away you can't hear each other and you have a, a little radio on your shoulder that you can like uh, we're talking on the radio now and and everyone can hear the radio so Kevin and I go into this, whatever it is, abandoned farmhouse, two stores or whatever. Was it just two of you? Or you just guys? the two of us. Oh, okay, yeah. you guys didn't, didn't have a truck guy? Did not. Experience. Well, we would like, if, if one of us need to go to the truck, we'd be like, uh, I'm going to head over to the truck and check the cameras or whatever. That's a bad idea. Uh, I'm, I'm just one go of to, you goes I'm to, go the, to truck. the truck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and, and so some of these ghosts, too, when you load into a level, it tells you their name. It'll be like, oh, this ghost is named Maggie Smith or whatever. Mm. Uh, she will respond to her name. Uh, which is where the microphone comes in, where you are like literally talking to these ghosts, and they're mm. talking back, and oh. it sucks. It is so fucking scary. <laughs> wow. Uh, so and, this is this is kind of uh, it's not a goofy thing. No, it's like this is it is scary. Evil. It is a it is a scary game. Gosh, that's fuck. <laughs> uh, and and so the ghosts will either sometimes some of the ghosts only respond if you're alone, which is so be, some of the things would be like all right. Kev, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you alone in the house here. I'll head out to the. Tr I'm gonna turn all these lights off. I'm gonna head to the truck because also they will only do their thing when when the lights are off sometimes. <laughs> of course. So I'm gonna head out to the truck. You stay in here. See what we can get. Are you guys wearing like headsets? Yeah, and I I fucking... turn all my lights oh, off. Oh my god. Kev was flying with all the lights on. Kev had to like Kev needed a break to go lock the door and turn all the lights on. <laughs> uh, but yes, headphones, lights off. Uh, and wow. and like that that thing actually happened where we, we were having trouble nailing down this ghost and I'm like all right I'll go outside you stay in here Kev uh, I went outside and uh, Kevin started saying the name of the ghost and you know it's it's real simple like hey can you give us a sign that you're here you know can you turn the lights on or whatever uh, and as soon as I left the house Kevin's like whatever it is Maggie Smith are you here apparently the radio started talking to him and I'm out in the truck I see the activity meter go to ten. And I, I go to tell Kev, like, hey, uh, we got activity, heads up. And the radio's cut out. I, it's like, <laughs> just static. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I go to the front door. Oh, I would have left. It's locked. Yeah, I would have left. The front door is <laughs> locked. The keys? I'm like, oh I'm, I'm, I can hear Kevin on the other side of the door being like, just fucking like, ah, losing his <laughs> mind. Our radio's not working. I'm on the other side, like, rattling. I'm like, Kevin, it's locked. You gotta unlock it. And he can't. And then the the, the haunt ends or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, and the door unlocks. And Kevin and I just get the fuck out of there. Sure. But, like, it... Is there any, like... Can you... Is there fail states? Oh, yeah. Or is there... It... Oh, so, okay. the... the I, I don't know exactly how it works, but... The the ghost will like under some conditions literally kill you if it, it you'll see it and if it gets too close mm -hmm. there, there's like there's some kind of hiding like you can hide from the ghost and turn your light off and you have to not speak or breathe into your mic because it is detecting that uh, and there there is some kind there is a fail state and there mm -hmm. is a way to like hide from them but it, it and is there a success state or is yeah. it just like yeah so you, out of the house <laughs> well you you gather your three pieces of info so you know you got to put yeah. down all your things and like oh okay we got uh, footprints we got uh, uh, freezing temperatures is one and we mm -hmm. got a, a five on the emf meter is is one and you plug all those into your journal and uh there are like seven or eight different types of ghosts but they can only every combination of three is only one mm -hmm. so you get them all you're like oh we must be dealing with a uh poltergeist or whatever right. you put your guests in your journal and then you just kind of drive away and it says like okay. oh you figured it out great you're not job. trying to like dispel the ghost no that's for the next to... team we yeah, just gotta figure out what the ghost is peter yeah. Vinkman and his team and yeah. fucking yeah, yeah. that place is fucked thing the alarm the klaxon goes off that and, sounds super cool that it seems like a really neat idea for yeah. a game man. and like so one of them uh i i was in the room and kevin was the one who left me alone this time uh or no kevin and i were both in the room usually it's called the spirit box which is the radio and it was the only time we ever had the spirit box work we're like you know it's, it's just going static it's like <laughs> flipping through the channels and we're like you know whoever Don donald smith glover. there's a lot of smith sure glover are you can you give us a sign and like it literally started speaking through the fucking spirit box where it's like, yes, behind. And I'm like, oh, Kevin, he just said behind. And like the door behind us slammed shut or whatever. And like, it does a very good job of making the almost like tropey horror haunted house movie things of like, uh, like all the lights flickering and all the doors slamming and locking shut while one person is trapped inside mm -hmm. is like that quintessential end of the horror movie yeah. in a way they're like this is fucking rad i'm glad i'm not in there like this yeah. is rad to be on the outside of like i can't get the door no <laughs> no that's very much like a like your feed goes down in the truck and you just kind of like turn everything off and drive away yeah. <laughs> well yeah. we left people behind we have people die in the houses that's they're like well i guess we're leaving this guy behind like, i wonder how many really... like you wouldn't get another job after that you wouldn't think I, it's a dangerous job. It's like being in the Bureau of Control. It's a hazard, I'm sure. Like, ah, oh, we lost mm. one on the field today. These people probably work for the FBC. Mm -hmm. I'd very much be like of the mind where it's like we only take jobs where we don't deal with ghosts that you have to be alone. 
we deal with two per, two person ghosts. Sure. Uh, and and if so we look at our journal and they're like one of you has to leave the house. We just both what? leave the house. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. Up, it's cool. Uh they all the different ghosts have different kind of attributes where it's like, oh, poltergeists will throw a lot of objects around the room. Um I don't know. The banshees will like hunt one person, but if there are two people, uh, the banshee won't won't appear. So you're safe in groups, and like they they have different abilities that you can sort of play around. It's really neat. <laughs> uh, it's like 15 bucks in Canada. It's made by one person. Uh, it's it's you can sort of tell like a lot of the controls are really counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. uh, once you kind of get them, you get them. Uh, oh, and also it's fully like VR capable. Uh, it's only PC, obviously. Yes, right now it's only PC. Yeah, it's really cool though. That communication stuff sounds really cool. Yeah, if I bet you they could do a lot of shit with it. If you're gonna play it, definitely play it in game because like the the having people on the radio is, is such a big part, and like it sounds so good in game. Mm -hmm. Where like you know, it's, especially when the radio cuts out and you're just hearing the ghost is like ah flying around you, and the lights are flashing, uh, and your radio is just going, and you're like ah someone help me. <laughs> uh, it's dope. It's so good. We got lost in a I, big fucking asylum too, oh where my like gosh. I don't think I can handle that. We had to I throw up a six down. Don't go into an asylum. Yeah, also oh, that. It was fun. like bomb the asylum. Yeah, Just like blow of it course up. there goes. <laughs> we don't need to figure out exactly what's in the asylum. Nuke them. If I I like hearing those stories, but I I don't think I would handle myself well at all Being, in that it's, game. with having a co-op friend with you it's really fun to like get scared yeah. together and because mm -hmm. you're just like oh my god i was just in here and the like the, the, the sink turned itself on and the door closed itself yeah and i heard someone like whisper it's, my name it's the same thing with movies like i watch a lot of movies and i watch 99 percent of them alone and i like save the scary movies i want to watch for when someone else is available yeah mm -hmm. it's, like it's i need to really bring cool. someone on this journey with me yeah it, it's very fun getting scared with other people mm-hmm and he, like, but I mean, I I, I just you, you are like afraid of ghosts in real yeah. life. This is I, like, I imagine that game and I Matt's going to the fucking van again because he made that call before I could make that call. Now I'm stuck in this fucking room. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you should let the guy scared of ghosts go to the van. <laughs> and, and then I'm just like, yeah. And then I have my headphones on and I hear something behind me. And I, I swear I would just fucking just hard hard power off my computer at that sure. point man one like, of those one of those ghosts should fucking get you when you're in the van that so that's what we were we're like asking of like what if one of these ghosts ever is yeah. like in the fucking truck with us right that'd yeah. be fucked yeah because the van's like, like the refuge yeah. Right. yeah the yeah. lights yeah. are always on in the van you're this is where you go and you're like oh my sanity's getting long i gotta get out of here yeah it was fucked. It'd be fun. You you would probably get a big kick out of it being like for real afraid of that stuff it it is so fucking fun so yeah i've i've spoken about my 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 fear of ghosts a lot mm -hmm. and i've i've kind of gotten over that and i i now realize that it's just fun to experience this stuff because lately i've been really more afraid of like actual real psychopaths and killers out yeah. there yeah mm -hmm. and ghosts and I just the general also direction the of the world, world. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> And so, yeah, it, it, that does sound really, really fun oh, to do. There's, there's an in-game. Uh, I can, don't know if I could do that. You can find Ouija boards in some of the levels, and you can ask them questions, don't and they will so fucking bad. spell out the answers. Oh, no. Yes, no. let's do it. You have to really role play that it's your job, because if I saw a Ouija board, I'd be like, why would I do that? Yeah, why would I fucking I mean, I carry anything? a crucifix. Like, you know, the hardest thing I found was a lot of them have to take a picture of the ghost. Yeah. And the the go when the ghost is appearing, it's really scary. And my reflex in real life is to like close my eyes. So there was a lot of me like, okay, we just need to picture the ghost. Let's split up and try and, and try and find it. And like I would always see it and just like picture the ceiling, picture no. like <laughs> my shoe, like a picture of the floor. Drop throw the camera by accident. That's a good one. Yeah, drop the camera all the fucking time. Oh yeah, that sounds uh, yeah. Bad. It's really fun. I had a great time. Did you find Pazuzu? I did not. I mean, we've, we've a few demons. Could have been. Could have been Pazuzu. You know, we just identify them. We just, we just tag them. And then the, you know, the buster's coming and bag them. Yeah. It's really rad. That sounds cool. That does sound really cool. Any other games here? But also, yes. Stuff? Like, you get assigned to the asylum. Check mark for haunted. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, just yeah. fucking send in the ghost. Like, your boss ball. asks you, we need to f you to find out if this asylum is haunted, and you're like, it's a fucking asylum. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> but they need to they need to know what, uh, you know, type of ghost fighting equipment to bring. They don't All need to know How shit. do they know? Yeah, it's too, you can't bring it. That's uh, uneconomical. Better send a team in. Or an asylum. You know? You can bring it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, you're just, is, what is it, a demon? Is it a, is it a Yuri? Look, if it's is a it farmhouse, a... I get, like, go is find it a, out what it is. Is it an but... Oni? You know, you gotta know how to dispel these things. You bring in smudge sticks, yeah, you or you bring disassemble crucifix. the asylum from the outside in. Yeah, 
ancient there's, burial there's, ground. There's probably. bad shit in there. It's abandoned for a reason. There was a number of unnatural deaths. Is the reason they give you I'm like? Oh, the, I wonder if this place is haunted. You know, the only reason why you even need to take that asylum down is capitalism. Yeah, it's because someone wants right. to fucking build something Fuck else capitalism. or something. Yeah, you should just be like, just leave the asylum. It's haunted. Just leave it. The ghosts were there first. There's a lot of earth out here that we can fucking unhaunted earth. We can build all your fucking supermart on. Also, yeah. The capitalism will just fuck. They should just bulldoze it and kind of like be naive to everything. Mm, Build them anymore. over it. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a haunted Walmart. Or that's that's how and, a lot of things in control end up. Yeah, be, and then and then yes, yeah. when when the haunted Walmart gets put out, uh, on our on our job sheet, I'm like okay, yeah, but I'm a lot more Walmart. willing to go investigate a haunted Walmart. Yeah. I, I and mean, then that's like, Walmart. hey, this used to be that asylum, and we're like, oh, fuck, glad it's a Walmart. Why would you yeah, tell us that? It's a Walmart now. <laughs> It's dope. I'll be in the van. Phasmophobia. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick break here if no one has any other games to bring up. No. I uh, I will say I quit. We, me, Warren, and Andy played Rocket League, and we played our first ever, um, like, scheduled tournament. Oh, yeah. Uh, where yeah, we yeah. played, like, but against other, actual other peoples in a bracket-style tournament. How'd it go? Uh, good. We did two different... So, the first day we did it, we made it to the quarterfinals. So it's How many, uh, there's yeah. a first round, a second round, a quarter semifinal. Um, and the first time we made it to the corners, uh, quarterfinals and lost. And we're like, okay, that was good. Uh, good first run at it. The second day we tried it, we lost in the first round, but then it said we could part. I don't know if it's just because of how many people join a tournament, but it's like, you could just start a new tournament, start a second chance tournament right now. Uh, oh, and weird. it seemed to be exactly like the other tournament, but maybe they're just like, if enough people sign up, then we'll just put all the losers in their own uh, other tournament. Yeah. Se- second um, chance almost sounds like the, it's usually the winner of the it second sounds chance like a gets to play the winner of the, But it, yeah. it didn't seem to be that style. Like it didn't seem like we were playing, as we moved on, it didn't seem like we were playing losers from the other bracket. So yeah. I feel like you just have to lose early and they'll be like, we'll just stick you in a different one. Because you have to wait, right? You like, you queue up for these tournaments and then you can't go play like You have online. to sign up 15, I don't know if you can't play online, but you have to sign up for the tournament 15 minutes early and it'll start a countdown for you. Yeah. And then it lets you navigate the menus and everything. So I, you could probably play casual or something. I th- yeah. I think I, 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 I saw complaints specifically about the tournament waiting mode where you mm-hmm. can do drills or something, but yeah, I, I don't yeah, know maybe exactly what it We've is. We've never actually tried. Um, but we, they usually go for a smoke, uh, and I sit there and get in my place of Zen. It's a long, 15 minutes, long time to yep. just sit there and do nothing. Um, and the tournament seemed to be about every two hours. So, oh, they're set. It's not like sign up, start the clock. Yeah, everyone who joins. Exactly. I yeah. see. Uh, which makes the 15 minutes make a little more sense. Yeah. But that's kind of, I, I always, for some reason, like structured tournaments, even though I never play or engage in them. Like Warcraft yep. three had them like, these are fucking dope. Uh, so in our second chance tournament uh, last night, we got to the finals and got just steamrolled. And the semis in the finals are best of threes. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, yeah, in the semis, we won two in a row. We we're feeling really good. And then they, uh, in between games, they take you to like uh, the bracket mm-hmm. to kind of show you what's going on. And then on the side, it has um, like tournament wide stats. So it's like which teams are scoring the most goals and everything. And the team that we were playing we had the second most goals in the tournament with like 11 and they had like 22 in first. Wow. And we're like, these guys fucking scoring. Were they, uh, was, were they just like cut above? They were very good. They weren't like flying around in the way that I was worried they would be, but they were just like solid. Weren't missing anything, burying their shots. So yeah. we got beat pretty good both games and can't win them all. Rocket League. Rocket League. Free to play now. Yeah. It's fucking great. Also, it's the spooky, well, that's probably ending pretty soon, but you can get the Ghostbusters vehicle. Oh, uh, Ghostbusters tires and the, the little Ecto fucking Stay Puff uh, one, one? fucking guy and lots is it of always Ghostbusters the Ecto theme one? stuff. They have an Ecto two. I'm not certain. I'm sure. I bet you in those new movies, there's probably an Ecto yeah. two. Hmm. Uh, let's go over a quick break, and we will come back here talk about some news. See you on the other side of this musical break. Palm Bay. <laughs> come back and talk about some news mm-hmm. <sighs> i don't know anybody some who palm, drinks like that in real life it's a palm bay commercial or yeah that's what i'm <laughs> <laughs> oh this fresh smooth crisp taste of palm bay zero palm bay zero Is that a healthy man's palm bay <sighs> 
Uh, I got a little bit of news. It's a bit of a slow news week here. Uh, the Our console's out next week. I guess the week after. Today's November the 1st. Yeah. Oh, we're to start. Cyberpunk delayed. Again. Again. The People are really shitty about it. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, people are being incredibly shitty about it. The company has asked you, please stop sending them death threats. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will echo that sentiment. Shame they have to ask you that. It's true. Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, th- this one's kind of a weird one where nobody on the team, nobody on the dev team knew, where mm-hmm. the like uh, Cyberpunk Twitter literally hours before the delay was announced was like, hey, who's ready for November 19th? We're, we've gone gold. No more delays. Uh, and then like five hours later, it was like, oh, well, unfortunately, we're going to have to delay back to uh, December the 10th now. Mm-hmm. New date. There was screen captures from people the day before. <laughs> the announcement asking the social media team is like, just just checking. I want to take some time <laughs> off play Cyberpunk. Are we still good? And they're like, yep, no more delays. And then the next day being like, it's getting pushed. Uh, also, the game went gold last week. So the fuck does that even mean mm-hmm. anymore? Where you, games go gold and you push them back. We should probably just stop using that as a any sort of a metric. Sure. In the world where... Uh, where discs mean less and less every day. Yeah, totally. Uh... So no one knew about this this crunch, this delay, pardon me. Um, and the reason they give is some kind of vague hand wavery about how uh, Dutch insider trading laws, they couldn't they couldn't tell the team because that could be stock market insider trading mm-hmm. or something. I sort of, I, I mean, I get the law is the law. I sort of don't buy yeah. that you couldn't inform your team at all. Um, and then the CEO, whose name I'm going to mispronounce here, Adam Kaczynski, maybe? As best as yeah. sure. the CEO, as it looks. Uh, Adam K, uh, in a call with investors, was like kind of flippant about it. He said, uh, It's mostly about QA and engineers, programmers, but it's not that heavy. Of course, it will be extended a bit, referring to the crunch, but we have feedback from the team. They're happy about the extra three weeks, so we don't see any threats regarding crunch, which is kind of <laughs> go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. Video game CEOs. The fucking worst. This apparently. video game CEO. I bet you he doesn't have to crunch. Y- uh, yes, I bet he doesn't. I bet you he's out at five. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I bet his pay bonus is only going up and up and up and up. Yep. Whereas these folks make a minimum wage. Uh, anyways, then he had to release a statement apologizing. He says, "I had not wanted to comment on crunch, yet I still did, and I did it in a demeaning and harmful way." <laughs> <Our> favorite. <laughs> Truth be told. <laughs> It's only now, when the stress connected with the delay decision and the calling itself is lifting, that I'm mm. fully realizing the true extent of my words. A bunch of bullshit. A bunch of fucking bullshit. Like the idea that the he's, that him commenting on it like snuck up on him. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I didn't want to comment on it, and yet here I am, <laughs> having had commented on it, and now commenting further. <laughs> yeah. Video game CEOs. Uh, but yes, delayed back to December the 10th. Apparently for optimization. Yeah, and I've heard uh, rumor and hearsay that it's optimization on the current gen console side, the Xbox mm-hmm. One and PS4. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's very hard to get a game running on so many different SKUs. Uh, EA, couple couple EA stories here. Uh, the Netherlands, Netherlands is apparently fining EA five hundred thousand euros a week until the loot boxes, the uh, ultimate team mode, is removed from FIFA. Uh. You remember way that seems like uh, they would be taking a loss on that deal. They absolutely we're going to get to that. Yeah, they absolutely okay. will be. Uh, way back it was the Battlefront Two. Remember Battlefront Two came out, mm-hmm. shook the the loot box thing. This is the fallout of that. Twenty eighteen mm-hmm. was when this lawsuit was initially uh, put into place. Um, EA says they generate, or or this is from uh, two thousand nineteen. They generated one point four nine billion dollars of revenue just from FIFA's Ultimate Team System last year. Why would they not just pay the fucking two million euro a month fine? And yes, a reminder that one billion is a thousand million. Yes, yeah, like <laughs> just just pay your two million euro a month and you're still making one point four billion dollars. It's fucked. It's so fucked. Oh, like, is this a law? Is this even a law? It's a law, I guess, if you make below a certain threshold of money. And like, what fines are you going to give them? Like, an, an short of being like, we're taxing you a high percentage of your earnings yeah they're should... never gonna find them enough for them to be like no just pay it and we'll keep doing what we're doing yeah, they should totally like a percentage of the revenue you're generating from the system that we deem illegal mm-hmm. but i i don't know i don't know I, i'm not a lawyer seems real fucked up uh and and like brando says they'd be stupid to remove yeah. their boxes 
1.49 billion dollars. Wasn't there a thing when this when this happened that they just you just have to be transparent about the percentage of that's still the case in some places. Yeah, yeah. De- depends some places where you're China that. now. You Does that to... make it okay? Like, hey, our loot boxes say that you'll get this Ronaldinho card. I think that makes it more okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like would one percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. Like some some uh, territories legislation is if you have this style of loot box, you have to disclose the odds. Mm-hmm. Just like on, then you will not get find anything. It's just like yeah. on scratch yeah. tickets, right? Odds of winning are approximately one in. 80,000 or whatever. And I don't know why more companies don't do that because I, I feel like putting the odds does not dissuade the people who are going to spend that yeah. kind of money. It probably dissuades a small percentage. Th- maybe right? a small percentage, you- but I feel like there's some people, like, I think there's also another small percentage that probably once they've seen the hard number, then they're like, now I know how much I have to put into this to maybe get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, if you, the less, the now less, I know I only need a thousand pulls. <laughs> the less you have to disclose, the better, right? Yeah. You're never going to tell the customer. Right, more yes. info than you have to obviously yeah yeah but i guess there's some sometimes there's something in my head that like i guess it always depends on what the numbers are yeah but if you put on the slot machine what my odds were then maybe all of a sudden i'm like huh but what if it's like point oh 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 exactly it depends on right? what the numbers are then, so. then you're like oh i only want this one thing that's like point zero 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 one percent i'm not even gonna play right whereas if you don't know at all you're like woo I just gotta keep spinning till I get that legendary. I think it's like a personality type thing because yeah. for me, it's very much not knowing the odds. Where I'm like, I'm not even gonna try because it's probably fucking rigged. Yeah. Whereas if I oh, do it's know, it, rigged. so if I do know it, then at least I'm like, if that number is something where I'm like, oh, that's one percent, but that's not bad oh, odds. Bad. Like, <laughs> uh, yes. That uh, speaking of EA, EA Motive, the folks who uh, just squadrons, they do squadrons. I'm pretty sure that was Motive. Looking at Brandon. A good question. Known I don't squadrons. Know I've never played that <laughs> video game. Squadrons. <laughs> no. Everyone was so hot on it, and I was uh, like, guys, I don't think I don't think I'm gonna play squadrons. Like, oh, I can't believe you're not. There's vintage Matt. Uh, all yes, you Matt do again. I believe what happened was Fuck Matt was guys. like, it's not a great video game, and I'm like, I don't need to play it then. <laughs> is I think how that went. Also, the game came out, and uh, I mean, it, it, it seems fine. It yeah. Doesn't seem great. Right. Seems exactly. Fine. So when you told me you played it and it didn't seem great, I, I was accept like, your apology. I was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, EA Motive said, uh, well, this is a job listing. Uh, they they imply that they have two more Star Wars games in the work. Works, pardon me. A uh, Star Wars action game, which there was a, a rumor, separate rumor of Force Unleashed 3 maybe being worked on. I don't want to play that. I do. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Fuck do I ever. Uh, and also a new Star Wars IP. Which would be dope. Yes, good. More new Star Wars IPs, please. Yes, I like Star Wars IPs. I me too, especially new ones, especially mm. ones where you're not beholden to the the movie license holders. What the fuck's even this. up with whatever that guy's name is? Cal, Cal Lightsaber. <laughs> Which Star Killer is Force Cal Unleashed? Star Killer is what I came up with. Cal Lightsaber <laughs> is no. You, I you know mean who Force Cal Push, Lightsaber for, is. Force Pushman. Force Pushman. Yeah, yeah. Cal Lightsaber. Uh, 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 Destroyer pull out of the airman. What is he doing? <laughs> From Force Unleashed? Yeah. That's Starkiller. That's uh, what I'm saying. Yeah, Cal he, Starkiller. He, oh. He's not, he's not Cal. <laughs> he has a name. I don't remember what it is. I know. Uh, he... I don't remember which canon, which ending is canon. Probably not the one where you kill Vader, I guess. So No, I think he made it. He dies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He becomes a Sith assassin in yeah. the end. Okay. They, I think, so the rumor I heard was this would not be about Starkiller. This would be Force Unleashed 3 in like... Uh, Concept more yeah, than... Yeah, yeah, ideology. Right. But would not be about Starkiller. I mean, I'm more into that then. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, I don't, I don't mind story. what Force Unleashed was. I didn't care about the story. Force Unleashed 1 is a good story. It was before yeah, all that. totally. Like, but then 2 did two, 2 is one of the worst games and I, And that, because 2 was the last one, I yeah. just d- never needed a 3 in yeah, my life. 2 was... <laughs> One one is good, especially before. No, one is good. I liked what uh, Force Unleashed one was. It good. was before all this, like what's canon, what's not canon, and you're mm. like, oh, this is a really interesting take on maybe how this rebellion got started. Do we know that this is canon, or did this get lost in the Force decanonization? Force Unleashed is not canon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was never canon. Well, I only want canon Star Wars now. Yeah, I also do, but <laughs> also like just fucking go nuts with it. Whatever, yeah. who cares? Let's but just... make it canon. Sure, yeah, make it, make it all canon. Yeah. What's the one? What's that recent one? The Red Brandalorian. Head? No. No. Hmm. Oh. The red-headed uh, Jedi guy. Cal Lightsaber. Is that uh, Cal Lightsaber? Uh, yeah. Cal. Cal. Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. That one any good? Yes. I have that in my hands. Well, good. That, is, that, uh, the, that pro, is something that yeah, I'm From a story not, point of view, it's a very good yeah. game. Yeah. It's a, it's a, not it's even a, interested it's in. It's a fine action game also. Yeah. 
If you play it, I, on, a, play it on a default difficulty. Yeah, I wonder how much mileage you'll get not liking Star Wars with that game. Okay. Damn fine Star Wars game. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that game. Uh, wow, Shadowlands. Wow. The uh, next expansion. 16th anniversary of World of Warcraft. Uh, apparently this new expansion, which just got pushed back to November, uh, has the highest pre-sales of any World of Warcraft expansion ever. Which, again, pre-sales is, you know, just pre-orders, right? Not a, not a hard, fast metric but ooh, I'm trying to think what number this is 9? Expansion 9? Burning Crusade <sighs> Wrath of the Lich King Cataclysm Mists uh, the the Back to the Future one Back to the Future Part 2 and then BFA so this will be the 8th expansion they're actually uh, Fox movies I think yeah yeah, yeah Michael yeah. Michael J yeah Fox right uh <laughs> what, what am I even <laughs> talking about? Uh, the the uh, wow pre-orders most pre-sales ever of an expansion. That's crazy. That is fucking crazy. This game is 16 years on. It is way past the height of its popularity. Uh, what is happening? Are people I, just... And people seem to hate this expansion. Like, the people did not like the beta. Complained so loudly it had to get pushed back. Like, mm -hmm. people really don't seem into Shadowlands. The last expansion was not good. A lot of folks, myself included, think maybe one of their worst. But, but here but, they are. Here we are. for more. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pandemic times, I guess. And also, uh, wow. I did not want to play WoW Shadowlands, but then all of a sudden I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, WoW Classic launched last year, which which Blizzard in there kind of bragging about their pre-sales. They're like, oh, after the uh, after our subscriber numbers doubled with the launch of WoW Classic. So I wonder if if maybe it brought a huge number of people back in. I don't think I'm going to play it. I don't I don't think I'm going to play it. But now seems like the time to tell you guys that I don't know what WoW is. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I yeah. I'm in there with you. No. The original and, but video all game. All I know is that Matt says that every time and ends up playing it. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I also fully yeah, I mean, because you, I, I you played all eight expansions. Would, yeah. would 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 not be, the be last one be ridiculous? Stop now, yeah, yeah. I'm like playing just, every Final Fantasy, and then I'm gonna stop at sixteen or whatever that new one that they announced was. I played seven. I played seven. The new seven. New seven. Maybe. Four. I played fifteen. Also, fifteen was alright. Uh, Halo Infinite. Let's talk a little bit about it. I don't think that video. I feel game like is it's rounding the final <laughs> final turn, and it's going to be out any minute. Uh, another director has left Halo Infinite. Uh, Chris Lee, who is the game director on Infinite, uh, has left. Still with three. Uh, still with Microsoft uh, to uh, pursue other activities. And uh, this this is the second director to leave the game. Two years. Creative director also left. And uh, remember recently they brought back Joseph Staten, Joe, old Joe, who mm. wrote, directed, and did a lot of the voices from uh, Halos 1, 2, and 3. Uh, OG Bungie. What is... The, so development hell can happen to anyone. Yeah. Um, it is crazy that the biggest Microsoft first party game that they have, their most valuable property, is... Just, it seems like it's so much down Shit Creek right now. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's kind of crazy. Like, what is that game? Like, I don't. No, I has, have less has, and less confidence that I know what that game is every day. It has free to play multiplayer. They they put out a thing where they're like they showed armor shaders you could buy and like oh five dollars for the purple or whatever or like pre order to get the purple thing and like they don't they got do this they got out there with hard fast microtransaction information about your fucking armor colors like before stuff people want to hear about exactly before before we're like is this game coming out is right. this game. It's wild. Uh, a I mean, little... There's nothing more disheartening than them saying, here's how you can pay us more money before you as a player even know <laughs> yeah. what the game is. It, man. Um, a Look little, at Halo. A yeah, little bit of the... That's kind of crazy. A little bit of the scuttlebutt is maybe uh, Joseph Staten is, is kind of... Uh, but the And again, this is all anecdotal, and, and a lot of it is supposition, but uh, maybe is in there writing the ship aggressively in a way that these other directors are like, fucking I do you the hands Ooh. off the wheel I guess it's yeah. all you now I'm fucking out of here uh, more like Joseph Stalin boom walks out the door Just Master Chief walks out the door <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I don't like you say it's Halo it's, that game was supposed to be out by now that game was supposed to come out in early October mm-hmm Fucking what the f now it's just delayed until 2021 yes and they just lost their director yeah that's all the news. Last week before, I guess next week will be the last week before consoles. Don't do that. Don't do this. It's so loud. Also, that knife is like really sharp, so be careful. No, that knife is super dull. Well, the tip is sharp. I mean, it's pointy. You you who have been carving into our 
Okay, let's see here. Because, yeah, it's paper cut, right? Paper cut's a good test. So Oliver has his knife. Uh, okay, yeah, that's definitely that's, cutting paper. Yeah, it'll okay. kill. Let's see the... This is my studio knife here that I use. Oh, wow. Wow. I don't know what I that feel, means. I feel like what you took quite a few swipes with the knife to begin with. Like, I feel like there's a little bit of, you know, if you put the same care and wanted to make a cut, I feel like you could have, but... Uh, it's fat. You tuned to the VOD this week, if you uh -huh. want to see. <laughs> knife yeah. test in Try action. Try the knife on the paper again. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that right. is a little bit. All right, it is sharper. I do have a thing in my truck that I do want to bring in and sharpen this up. Is it a knife? Is it a knife sharpener? It's a, yeah, it's a knife sharpener. <laughs> it's like, what, it's what, a thing. <laughs> what, what do we? What do we? What do we use? A stone? Use a steel? Do this, use a crotch? This thing is is like um, it, it's it's yeah, it's like a wet 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 metal, a, a metal grinder. I don't know what the fuck it is. I I grind it against the edge of things to get it. Does it do anything or does it look cool? It looks, but it's both. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you just get one of those, like, set them and forget them, the crotches where it's got the two stones like this. Yeah, and I have you, one of those too. Yeah, it's you, just, like, uh, can't get the angle wrong. I know everybody wants to be a hero and freehand sharpen their knives on the steel or the stone, yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. it's hard yeah. to get it you gotta perfect. Look cool. If you look If you don't look cool, why even cut a sharpen in the knife? Yeah, that's... Yeah. If you're not cool enough to wield it afterwards podcast at talkingreckless.com is the email address you want to write in here to the show or you can drop this on our discord uh we'll save our game of the generation talk till next week yeah we went oh we uh, didn't even talk about yeah. that yeah, i gotta we we got all right i gotta get out of here and eat and then D, D is on yeah uh go go join the discord great little community over there check out the patreon where you can support the show on patreon.com slash talking reckless podcast we have the anime podcast up go and check that out for patrons uh we'll have some mandalorian thoughts soon for patrons a lot of good stuff the longer version of this podcast this this today's episode will have about uh, like a half an hour Tron I think as always no idea what we talked about TV I think more yeah. TV yeah. a lot of TV talk on this more week's TV Tron. movies TV. Yeah. no crime or drugs mm. Mm -hmm. well don't don't turn people off the there might be crime or drugs you'll have to listen and find out the people who have the Tron probably listen to the Tron first right uh yeah I, I put it before the show right so you get the whole. Oh, it's not you get a the whole file. Yeah, it's just no, it's just one longer file. A little higher audio quality as well, mm -hmm. uh, over on the Patreon. You uh, really hear how great that new mixer sounds. Yeah, I hope it or sounds how terrible. Good. Or it's, how terrible? Or how terrible? Or how terrible? Tell us it's next been week. it's been looking good. It's dope that I don't have to like turn to the side and like lean off anymore. Oh, oh, I'm loving it. I'm and it's not even the right one yet, and I'm already. Mm. Mm. Is this a tablet that you yeah. fucking got? Yeah, this is just a, a, a Samsung Or is it tablet. like an app on the, that tablet? Yeah, this is just an app that you could put on an oh. iPad or... But that tablet is... They sent you the tablet. No, this is just That's a... your tablet? This is... Yeah, okay. this is Kyle's tablet, actually. Kyle's, but this yeah. is just a tablet. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could do it on a phone. Could do it on a laptop. I tried the phone, but I... Very fat fingers. It's hard to... It's cool what you're doing there. Hard yeah. to fade the faders. Uh... D and D, go check that out. I'm trying to remember my my post show wrap here, Rolling Reckless. I think that's all I have to tell you. Okay, thank you very much for listening, Oliver J. Thanks for coming in here. Always a pleasure to. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Matt. Being here from you, uh, and thanks for the double header today. It's going to be a big uh, effort, a big to do. It's okay. I'm I'm up for it. I, I really like had, to play D and D. Had weeks off, so you're oh yeah energized. That's been a long time too. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Lynch, thank you as always. Being the plum out of gas. Yeah, you just oh, shook your head. No, I said your name. You're like, nope, no. Nope. Uh, well, Please, thanks very much, the Brandon for... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for making it in here. Yes. Uh, and you at home, thanks so much for listening or uh, watching around the shows. Also on YouTube, you can find the VOD over there, or you can find it wherever fine podcasts are vended near you. We'll see you here uh, next week. It'll be the 339th episode of the Talking Reckless podcast. We'll see you then.